yo what's going on ladies and gentlemen welcome to the channel this is the rth podcast i'm your host nephew man and i'm checking in bro so news coming out of the city of brotherly love which is philadelphia man a couple of guys got in um touch with um Stephen fulton and they were able to get an interview now this is slightly old news um i don't know if you guys have seen it it's slightly old it's not very old but it's slightly old this is shortly after he's leaving the ring versus um daniel roman Stephen fulton and um a lot of guys were asking them questions about um undisputed with uh marijan akmadalia or the super fight between himself and um Naoya Inoue. and basically in so many words man Stephen fulton uh, said there are a lot of holes in his fight style that I can exploit. Now he did also go on to say that he's pretty sure that people could look at his fight style and see things that they can exploit. But when it comes to the night of the fight between him and either Marajan Akmadalia or Naoya Inoue, He's fighting against himself, man. The only person that can beat him is him. He don't think that nobody could really dictate a win over him. You know, it's just going to be his mistakes that loses the fight. You know, um, I don't think he see anybody that can beat him. Man, let's let's keep it real, bro. Undefeated. Um, beating nine undefeated fighters four in a row before he seen um, Daniel Roman. And now... It, it, it kind of serves the question to a certain degree of is this fight technically necessary I know we all are excited about uh, Naoya Inoue going up against Stephen Fulton or Stephen Fulton going up against Naoya Inoue however you see it right whoever you think is the A side but saying that to say though man Stephen Fulton has unfinished business in the super bantamweight division bro he's been trying to get at Marajan Akhmadali if I think for about a year and a half, two years. Excuse me. And uh, now it's kind of like they threw a monkey wrench in the middle of the pile. You know what I'm saying? Like, how does um, Naoya Inoue go up um, and see number one when number one technically has unfinished business? Like, I don't know if this is fair or not. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sitting here saying that uh, Stephen Fulton um don't deserve this fight or he shouldn't fight in this fight that's not what i'm saying but uh after listening to the interview that he had bro it seemed like he had a very strategic plan to get undisputed maybe defend maybe once or twice and then get out of there he want to go up and wait and so it's kind of like he's being held up for one extra fight first and this is a this is a more than a qualifier, right? And then here's the craziest kicker, right? Why should Marajan Akhmadaliev, no offense to him, why should Marajan Akhmadaliev get dibs on undisputed when Stephen Fulton, 21 and 0, nine undisputed uh, nine undefeated fighters, and and holds two belts in that division, and who has been the top dog in that division? Why shouldn't he get the winner of Marajan and Naoya Inoue? You see what I'm saying? It, it's kind of like, it, it's to a certain degree, and I can understand where Fulton was coming from. It's to a certain degree uh, not important to fight um, Naoya Inoue. Now, I, I don't think he's ducking the fight. Uh, we already know that he, he agreed to everything. He agreed to go to Japan. He was saying he was going to go to Japan uh, prior to all of this even coming to the forefront. He was already saying, yeah, man, I'll go to Japan to fight him, but I really want to see a marriage on Akbadali so I can become undisputed first. And, you know, this is a, a make-or-break kind of fight. Do y'all think it's too much pressure on Stephen Fulton right now? That's the question I'm asking, right? Because, I mean, I'm not saying that he's going to lose. I'm not saying he's going to win. I don't know, y'all. I haven't done side-by-side -side, uh, analysis on either one of these guys. Um, it's, it's just a figment of my imagination right now until the fight is coming to its forefront. Once we can get to fight time, I can watch them both back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back. Uh, to back to back to back to back to back to back. And see who I think is going to win. But uh, I don't know, bro. Because cause watching the interview, I kind of feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? Because he's like, bro, 
I'm trying to get undisputed, bro. Like, y'all talking about Naoya in no way. That ain't going to help me become undisputed. I, if I beat the guy, what I gain? Right? What I gain beating Naoya in no way, the little guy coming up to my division trying to fight me. What do I What do I gain? And he has a point. You know what I'm saying? What do he gain if he wins? Naoya, on the other hand, gains everything. You know, it's, it's, it's one-sided. And it's kind of unfair, bro. Like, to a certain degree, it's kind of unfair because the guy is – one fight away, bro. Y'all should have gone ahead and mandated Marijan Akhmadaliev and Stephen Fulton. That's just my opinion. Naoya in no way should have probably had another fight, excuse me, in the bantamweight division. And we can get Naoya and Stephen Fulton towards the end of the year. You see what I'm saying? Because it's a full year ahead of us, bro. And uh, we can get this fight way in August, September, October, something like that. It'll still be a legitimate fight, and then it will be for uh, undisputed for both fighters. You see what I'm saying? You see how much money is being left on the table because they haven't given Stephen Fulton the uh, the undisputed fight with Marijan Akhmadaliev. Now, here's the thing: I'm not saying that Fulton is going to go in the ring and watch Marijan. I do think that Marijan Akhmadaliev is a legitimate fighter in the super bantamweight division. I do think he has um, a lot of power in both hands. Now, here's the thing that, that I, I can say about Marijan, if he were to see Stephen Fulton, sometimes he get a little impatient and he get a little too aggressive and he start eating a lot of punches, right? That could be a bad thing for a guy who has fast fists like Stephen Fulton. But, uh, yeah, man, if they would have just let these two guys fight, we could have got two undisputed fighters in the ring grossing this fight above freaking status uh, of anything that Naoya has uh, acquired as a boxer in Japan. It will gross higher than anything Stephen Fulton has acquired uh, in America. And, bro, it would be a super fight nonetheless. It's still a super fight, right? But you got you to gotta kind of think that it's not to a certain degree. Now, when it comes to these two fighters, bro, before I get up out of here, man, when it comes to these two fighters, I've said it before, and I will say it again. Um, Stephen Fulton versus Naoya Inoue, Naoya Inoue versus Stephen Fulton, is uh, two masters, two martial artists um, at the top of their game going at it. So, it's, it's in my opinion, it's Jim Kelly, Bruce Lee. No offense to anybody who might take offense to that. But that's to me, bro. I think it's Jim Kelly, Bruce Lee, bro. This is just my opinion, bro. Because they both are masters of the craft. They both understand defense. They both have power in both fists. I don't care how many times y'all tell me that they don't. Yes, they do, bro. Um, they all you probably hit slightly harder than Fulton. But it doesn't really matter because they're going to be on the same playing field. So all of that power, it's the same amount of power that he's probably already been feeling. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention he's in training camp with the likes of Jerron Ennis. And I'm pretty sure Jerron ain't taking it easy on Stephen Fulton, y'all. And I'm pretty sure Jerron Ennis hits way harder than Naoya in no way. So, I mean, in 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 all retrospect, right, and in all respect for both of these guys, I don't see this being a one-sided fight, bro. I don't care how many times y'all leave these comments in my comment section saying that it's going to be a one-sided fight. It's not. You're talking about defensive skills, bro, for, for both gentlemen in itself. You're talking about great offensive um, abilities for both of these gentlemen. You're talking about uh, undefeated fighters, both hosting gold in their divisions, both number one of their divisions. Both has had tremendously tough fights in their careers. Both are at a point right now where Undisputed could reign supreme. In their lives, um, Stephen Fulton could be undisputed if y'all just go ahead and give him Marijan and stop letting Marijan duck. He had to fight Daniel Roman for no fucking reason, bro. For no reason, y'all put him on a sidebar to fight Daniel for no reason. And now y'all doing it again with Naoya Inoue. And to a certain degree, man, just as a fight fan, all right, not a guy who just want to see a great fight, but as a real fight fan, you kind of have to... You know, give it the side eye to a certain degree. It's kind of like, damn, why Fulton can't get undisputed first? And then go and see um, Naoya in no way. Here's the craziest thing. If Fulton wins this fight, right, if he wins, right, 
versus Naoya Inoue. Do y'all think that Marriage Young gonna get in the ring then? I mean, it's bad enough that uh, Fulton just beat Daniel Roman. We still don't have the MJ fight. Now you're trying to give him Naoya Inoue. Again, not giving him the MJ fight. He beats Naoya Inoue. If he beats him, right? Do y'all think then they're going to mandate Marriage on Akhmadadia to see Stephen Fulton? But here's the craziest thing. I guarantee you if Naoya Inoue wins this fight, they're going to mandate Marriage on Akhmadadia to come out and see Stephen Fulton. I mean, not Stephen Fulton, uh, Naoya Inoue. So that would, that would serve the question as to why haven't they done that for Stephen Fulton just yet? You know what I'm saying? So I had seen somebody who was like, um, Fulton don't want this fight. Well, bro, he's already signed. He's all, well, not signed, but he's already agreed to everything. So it's no way of saying that he don't want the fight, bro. It's no way of saying he don't want it because he's already agreed to it. But I do, I do feel as though it's unnecessary right now. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it serves that question. Is it unnecessary? I think it is. But uh, this is just my time on this, man. I, I seen this interview and I was like, you know what? Perfect time to cover something, bro. It's it's still early in the day. And we waiting on Arthur Better Beave and Anthony Yardy to pull up to uh, the Wimbledon Arena to get it on, bro. So in the meantime, between time, I have to cover news for you guys because I don't feel comfortable when y'all ain't got no content, bro. I just don't. And it's hard for me to enjoy my day until I give y'all something, bro. So this is one I'm going to give you guys for right now. Um, there are a lot of hoes in the Yogi No Way's fight style that Stephen Fulton feels that he can exploit. He's pretty sure that Naoya Inoue and his camp has found holes in Fulton's fight style that they can exploit, but he's not going to let that happen. In so many words, he's saying that uh, he don't care, bro. He's going to fight the best and prove that he's the best. And uh, it's not a popularity contest for him. He just want to be able to swing his fist and prove how good he is. Like I said to all of the Naoya Inoue fans who keep just <laughs> going crazy in my comment section. We're having some great conversations in the comment section. So if you guys want to become a part of it, just just talk, bro. We always talking in the comment section, bro, on my channel. So it's cool, bro. And I, I will respond as long as your message makes sense, bro. I will respond unless you just lame or something. Then I'm not, I'm not gonna say nothing. Um, but yeah, man, it seems as though uh, no matter how how much y'all see this fight being a one sided situation. I just don't, bro. I just don't. I don't know, man. But like I said, man, this is just my time on this one. This is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. Fortune saying, man, the only person that's going to beat him is him, bro. And you kind of got to you kind of gotta look at him and say, bro, nine undefeated fighters. Naoya Inoue will make number 10. He will make number 10 of, of undefeated fighters that has come up short when it comes to beating Stephen Fulton, but if Fulton cannot get past Naoya Inoue, it's kind of like, dang, bro, you was one fight away from undisputed, man, and they hold you to a certain degree. It's not, it's not a hold, but it is to a certain degree, bro. You kind of got to see it that way, cause damn, he should be fighting for undisputed right now, bro. Why is he fighting Naoya Inoue for no reason? Like I don't know. That's just my time. Listen, man, RTH Podcast, your host nephew signing out. Y'all take it easy, bro. Peace.